Anyway, yesterday was a significant day. I had a very good conversation with someone. Won't give any details, but if that someone sees this, hello, thank you very much for uh, uh, your talking with me yesterday. Um, our conversation was meaningful to me in a lot of ways. Um, not the least of which is that I feel like I've gained some confidence in what I do and who I am, especially going forward. Um, you know, I came away from Japan, the life that I'd lived there, um, you know, young family man and the dawn of YouTube and social media making a slight mark in my own way with what I did as, as you know, putting on a couple of hats, you know, softy papa, the, you know, explorer in the woods, a band in Japan, a, you know, ex examining the, the ruins of the past, uh, YouTube bullet train, the frenetic, uh, uh, caffeinated uh, uh, urban wanderer, and then Lyle's brother, which was one one hat that I wore that uh, was probably closer to my my true self than any of those other guys is, and then came here and then you know you know buckled under so to speak, put all that on a shelf and focused on uh, you know completing out completing my adult responsibilities, yeah. Uh, making sure that my daughter received her proper education, uh, taking care of my family's needs, preparing for our future, readying my wife and I for retirement, all the responsibilities that come with midlife. But now I'm facing down the next giant transitional phase, really the third phase of my adult life. The first phase being the single life of when I was in university and trying to find my way, the second phase being the married life and, the, and family, and the third phase being um, uh, old age and what to do with that after, after work is done, after child raising is done. And I will confess that I have been timid and uncertain about just what to do. Well, I mean, I knew what I was going to do. I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to Japan and I'm going to do those things I did before, but I, I, I have lingering hesitations and, and how do you put words on it? it? Yeah, it even makes my hands go like that, right? I mean, what is it? It's What just what is it? I think it comes down to identity, maybe. I'm really shooting in the dark. I didn't plan. I thought I had this thought out when I started this video today. I guess I hadn't thought it all through. Although I know, I know, I know better now. I guess it. Okay, when you know it's easy when you've got a job. You know, sometimes I wonder why some of my coworkers will work for thirty-five years at their job, especially given that where I work, if you work for thirty-five years at that place, you can retire, <laughs> get a raise. No, no kidding. You 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 quit. You stop working, and they'll that your retirement income will be more than your job by far, a lot more. And I wonder why do they do that? Because job works hard. Well, it could be that they like what they do. That's a possibility. I also think that it's scary doing anything else. That's all we know. Hmm. Hmm. Is that me? Could that be me too? When I was 20, we'll take a couple of examples. Let's take Ron, for example. Ron won't mind me using him as an example. Ron's over in Japan. Ron's been a friend of mine for a long time um, on YouTube, and etc. Ron's 22. We've been friends since he was a, he was a kid, basically. You know, I don't know how it is that people, 
people seem to a lot of a lot of people seem to pick up my videos, especially young men in their in their early teens and preteens, and then stick with me through their young adulthood. And Ron's one of those guys. Ron is fearless. He throws himself headlong into one life adventure. I'm not talking little things like a like a like a five week trip to some country where he's got a round trip ticket. He buys one way tickets, and he goes and he drops himself. At his young age, he drops himself in, in places and just succeeds everywhere he goes. He's he's kind of like a, the poster boy for the great life adventure. Uh, I don't have that in me anymore. Um, I guess there's more of me, the 35-year career veteran that doesn't quit in me than I thought. So I guess the thing that I was struggling to find any words for for earlier was the unknown. What's the what next? What if, what if I'm not no longer this? I guess that's me too. I didn't think it was. And I guess maybe that's the way nature is, wants it, right? Because it's the role of old people like us, right, to... to Create the foundation to have to serve as the we're the we're the we're the bottom people in the human pyramid, right? Hold, holding up the thing, we can't be shifting things around. The whole thing falls down. I mean, we're facing that now, Nick and I, with our daughter, because you know we had a talk with her on Sunday night about how you know we're up and leaving you, right? I mean, we brought you to America, you know, got you through school, you're gonna get your get your degree, and mom and dad are packing their bags and out of here. That's not the role of the old folks, right? Maybe that's part of it too, but we can't do it. Be off, and it's not. And both you and I have our our, work, our places of work are quite reasonable. They're they're normal. They're challenging, but they're quite reasonable. But we just don't have it in us anymore. We are Yumiko and I are burned out. On we're burned out on the frenetic. To use that word again, not frantic, but frenetic Southern California life. Plus, we if we stay here, we'll have to work until we're seventy. Neither of us want to do that. So we'll cash out, so to speak, and go, go secret ourselves away to some uh, simple life in Japan. And so, mm, now I see it. So it's not just, now that's why I couldn't find the words earlier. Because it's not just fear about where I'm headed, it's the, maybe the innate sense within me that I shouldn't be moving. Old people don't do that. Old people stay on the family farm. You know, mom takes care of uh, the inner world, and dad putters around in the garage and, <laughs> and changes changes the snow tires. And then the kids all come home for Thanksgiving with their or Christmas or whatever the holiday is with their kids, and uh, enjoy together the holidays under the, the hearth and the feast of the family home. That's what's doing it too. That's why I can't see forward. Because it's an, it's an inertia that has grown. I'm not Ron. I'm not, I don't, Ron is innately blessed, as young people are, with a forward momentum. The old like me have a weight in our ass. That's the hard thing to lift. Gosh darn it, I see it now. All of these thoughts are precipitated by a conversation that I had yesterday with, as I mentioned when I started the video. Um, and I won't share any details, but again, if that person sees that, thank you very much for that. You helped me to, to begin a train of thought that led to this moment now of realizing that it's not just forward motion, but it's also the weight of who I've been that makes it hard. How much more so if I had uh, decades of accumulated home and hearth to weigh me down. As Thoreau described in Walden, watching his neighbors walk along, he describes his farm neighbor at 4 a.m. taking uh, his uh, produce to market, passing Walden Pond on the road, the highway, the dirt, 
This is 1840s, right? Along the road. And he knows, well, the Thoreau describes the farmer pushing before him his, his house, his barn, his 40 acres of plowed field, weighing him down. The inertia of, uh, of, his, of his settled life. And I'm struggling, and I haven't got any of that. Hmm, now I see. 